Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all my baggage droppers around the world, welcome to another episode of the Drop Your Baggage Podcast with your host right here, Charles Wolfork. This podcast to help people get some of these things off their shoulders. And today we are with the amazing Mimi Bond. But before we get into it, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button if you are on YouTube and Facebook. And if you are on any podcast platform out there, buckle up because you're gonna we're gonna be on a wild ride. Now, the outstanding Mimi here is from Austin, Texas, has been there since 2012. She is someone that has been doing the work, the self-work to improve herself. She is a warrior of change and improvement, and she's always becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable and she's teaching others to do the same she was born and raised in macedonia and grew up working in the family business which is a restaurant but now she came to the u.s in 2005 found love and married in 2006 and her uh, to a husband that's ridiculously supportive and in 2016 she did a total flip in her life did her first house flip and have done 200 flips since now she works with keller william and has her own team this lady's a rock star you guys you better pay attention and it's part of the leadership council at keller williams in texas and the most important job that i would say is her being the mother of two amazing boys 14 and 12 ladies and gentlemen i bring to you mimi by what's up mimi <laughs> Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, so, Mimi, you said that we, we, we chatted a bit before and you said that you used to work over at the Hyatt and that was the beginning of your personal development journey, if you will. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yes. So I came to the U.S. in 2005 and um, I started working for the Hyatt. And I always say it's so important, the people that you surround yourself with. And I was really, really fortunate to be surrounded by some amazing managers and people who saw more in me than I saw myself. So, you know, as, as I started working for the Hyatt, I'm a hard worker. I work in our, in our family restaurant, so I know what hard work looks like. And, you know, I was able to um, get, you know, get different positions at the Hyatt. And, but again, that would not have happened um, if I was, if, if I was not surrounded by the right people who were there to cheer me up and tell me that there's more and that the sky is the limit. There's a couple of my mentors that I've actually reached out to them um, a couple of months ago just to thank them for believing in me. And, you know, where I am right now, it's because of those people. So wow, that's outstanding. So, so let's back up. So when did you, when, when did you start working in the, uh, the family business? How old were you? Oh my gosh, forever. We've always, my parents always owned a restaurant. So if it was the summer, we would be washing dishes <laughs> or, uh, you know, what, then when we were in college, my sister and I would come for winter break or summer break and we will be in the kitchen, um, on the grill or cooking, just helping my parents out as much as we could. So it's like, it's, it was like a lifestyle. That's who we were. It was an identity <laughs> back home. So like, obviously you learned uh, the, the, obviously you learned work ethic from your father being an entrepreneur. Is there anything else that you learned from your father being an entrepreneur as well? Oh, both, both my parents, I would say to never give up, you know, regardless of how hard it was. Mm -hmm. um, I think my dad was always more realistic. My mom was always a dreamer. And um, even there were times when we didn't have much, but they always made it a point that we were going to have fun and we, we will we will we always made most of out of what we had regardless mm -hmm. of what the situation was so yeah it started right there for my parents watching them grind every day and just showing up every day wow and they were like did you guys take vacations or anything like that or was always just like no we got to make sure that the business is taken we did of oh of course we did take vacations Good. but you know the the restaurant was everything. It was the center of everything. So, amen, amen. And so, with your mom being a dreamer and your dad being the work, the worker, they also did they like um, 
um, like did they support your dreams as well when you were a kid too? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, going to college, um, that was one of my biggest dreams is mm -hmm. going to college. There were huge supporters coming to the U S you know, um, I remember when I talked to my parents about coming to the U S to work and travel, mm -hmm. a lot of my friends, their parents were afraid, right? You have that fear of going somewhere in a strange country without knowing anybody. Mm -hmm. And my parents were supportive. They never stopped me from doing anything. You know, they always believed that I'll make the right choice, but they raised me to be like that, <laughs> to make the right choice. <laughs> so, but they were always supportive. Yes. Always and, extremely supportive. And to take and obviously to, to take chances as well. And mm -hmm. what was it about the United States that called you? I just needed a change. You know, uh, my major in university was English. So I thought it was a really good opportunity to um, improve my English. Mm -hmm. And then I was going through some life changes. I had broken up with a long relationship back then. So I just needed. I was ready for a change. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to go. I'm going to see the world and experience and see see what, what is out there outside from my small country that has only 2 million people. <laughs> wow. How, what the huge is that? So tell us about yeah. the emotions and tell us about like what you were going through when you were making that transition uh, from Macedonia over to the United States? Like, what, was there a fear? Was there excitement? What, like, what, what was the preparations? What was your mindset like? You know, um, it was terrifying, actually. Hmm. It was really, really scary. But it was also extremely exciting. It was a, an opportunity and a chance to see the world, to go outside of my country, to come to, the, to America, you know, I grew up watching these movies with the white picket fences and, um, you know, these huge houses and the lifestyle, seeing what the U.S. is. And like nowadays, it's like I'm living the dream, like mm -hmm. the movies that I watched back home growing up, it's like I'm in these movies right now, like pinch me, <laughs> is this real life? <laughs> you know, we're here now where it's all happening yeah so, yeah it was you, terrifying though um coming to the u.s and and you know it was a huge cultural shock too and after um living staying to live in the u.s i had a couple of years where i was really i was just not sure who i was it was like lost in in translation the movie where you know you're just you, you have two cultures and you're just fighting with yourself who it's, it was like an identity crisis for me for a while there. Mm. So, mm. and like, <laughs> as you were struggling through that identity crisis, what were some of the things that really helped you through that and out of that? You know, it was uh, being looking on the bright side. Mm. It was always looking on the bright side, knowing that, um, you know, there's, Seeing that there's so much opportunity here in the U.S. and uh, realizing that you can become whoever you want to become mm. and kind of getting on the journey of, okay, this is where I am. This is what, what, how I was raised and what I carry with me so far. But tomorrow is an opportunity for me to reinvent myself, to mm. become whoever I want to be. You know, there's no, there's no strings attached. I can just be whoever. I, it's a choice that. I make every single day of who, who I want to be. And, you know, that was just, it's been a journey of reinventing myself and changing the way I think and change, changing the way I look at things. And, and so what I hear from that is a reframing. So whatever situation that you're is you know, you're in, you can reframe it mm -hmm. over to something more positive. And with that, you are uh, the second thing is gratitude staying in gratitude for what you have you having all these opportunities and everything that you do have and everything that you've gone through that prepares you for right now that, that's really huge and the third is always is was growth 
uh, mm-hmm. growth, like always challenging yourself to say, hey, I can become whoever I want to become, especially in a place where, you know, nobody knows me. <laughs> you know <what> I, mean? <laughs> it's like, I can become whoever I want to become right here, right now in this very uh, moment. Mm-hmm. And so, so like with that, did you start to kind of get that feeling of becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable? Absolutely. You know, uh, my husband's a huge driver. He, he has been such, I, I, I'm, I have to say, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for his support mm. and, and for him, again, seeing the, th- the, the things that I didn't see in myself and mm-hmm. constantly pushing me, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's terrifying to start something new. It's terrifying to, uh, move somewhere else mm-hmm. and um, my husband has always been there and like we we got this we can do this right we yeah. we can uh, risk taking is huge for us especially when you're in the business that we're in mm-hmm. it's calculated risk but it's still a risk so <laughs> learning to be comfortable being uncomfortable all the time has been you know the mantra mm-hmm. um, and I feel like after overcoming that fear of being uncomfortable and getting used to it it's it's just so much easier now Mm -hmm. it's it's not you know I used to be terrified of things and um I used to hyperventilate and and (laughs) always think about the worst thing that can happen right instead of thinking about but what if the best thing happens Mm -hmm. I think us as human beings were wired to always uh, our brain goes into fight or flight right Mm -hmm. it's always about what's the worst thing that can happen and how do I equip myself to prevent it from happening instead Mm -hmm. of this is the best thing that can happen and Mm -hmm. how do I just keep pushing so I get there so it happens so 100 percent like like we need to have two different f's instead of flight or or, uh, fight we can have like fun and fantastic you know what I mean it's yeah. <laughs> like that's totally what you can go from because you know there's the possibilities are endless there's billions of possibilities like I could totally like pull my ear right now but I could have done trillions of other things at this very sing- at this very moment and with people just limiting themselves to what mm-hmm. only could go wrong it's uh it's due to the limiting beliefs that we have but also just sometimes a a lack of imagination like yeah you know things can go go haywire but also at the same time things can go better than expected i also think you know coming from a small town in from a small country um i wasn't surrounded by a lot of change you know everybody around me the environment was Mm -hmm. well this is how it's always been so everybody just goes on that trajectory and like there wasn't much change so I think it's really crucial for us who we're surrounding ourselves with and like what are those people doing are they achieving are they reaching for other things and I think when you grow up in a small community where everybody does the same thing, then Mm -hmm. you don't even know the possibilities that are out there. You have no idea Mm -hmm. what, you know, what the world can offer. Like for me, that was huge coming to the U S and seeing that there's so many possibilities. I, I truly feel like, you know, there's trees out there and it's like opportunities on those trees. All you have to do is just put some effort, reach after it and, and see what comes out from it. Mm-hmm. But, and, and, you know, what I say with folks, as you know, you know, we're all doing the best that we can with the resources and consciousness that we have. So whether you're living in a small town in Macedonia or whether, you know, you're living in the, the hood in Cincinnati, Ohio, mm-hmm. we're all just doing the best with what we got. And if you don't know, you, or you don't know what you don't know, right? Exactly. So, you know, f- folks kind of live in this box. And for people who see outside of that box or to dream outside of that box, I mean, how many, uh, how, there, there probably aren't too many folks that, that whose dream was, was not just cultivated, but also harbored like yours was with you having the amazing parents that you had. So of course, you know, like getting out of that environment and getting around amazing people is just going to help you grow that mm-hmm. much more like your husband, who sounds 
absolutely absolutely fantastic <laughs> i hope i get the meeting so like are there any um ex like expectations or standards that you set for your friends and also for your team over there at keller williams you know i I, I I think during my development journey and improvement journey, I had to kind of um, take out the people who was always who were always negative, right? Like I had to, and and kind of slowly they fall off because surrounding yourself with people who are always playing victimhood, or you know, it's always somebody else's fault for for whatever it's happening to them slowly throughout the years, the people that I used to hang out with, those people fell off and, you know, and I've surrounded, I'm so grateful that I've surrounded myself with people who are wake up every day and they see the good in people. They, you know, they take responsibility for whatever happens for to them. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's something huge that I learned through the self uh, help and self improvement journey is okay things went wrong but I, I always take a step back but how could I have reacted in this situation and mm. would there have been a different outcome even though maybe it was not my maybe I, I, I could not have done anything but I always take a step back and I look at what could I have done differently for a situation not to develop in a, in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then for our team, it's always, you know, there's, there's no negativity. There's no, um, there's no gossiping. There's no, the culture is that we're all really uh, honest and open. And if we have something to say, we say it openly to each other. Um, and mm. you know, we, we, if, if there's an obstacle, we vent, we, we have the right to cry for five minutes or be <laughs> upset for five minutes and then we pick ourselves up and we move on. And literally I'm very uh, blessed to have teammates who are just like that. You know, life is not easy and, and things will happen and bad things happen, of course. And we all get upset and we have the right to be upset, but it's five minutes. And then we move on. We keep on going. <laughs> you got that time limit and the clock starts now. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, that's right. Very, very short pity parties. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. then you come up out of it. Mm -hmm. So what it sounds like you said introspective. So introspective as part as far as looking inside and seeing like, how could I have done things differently, which relates right back to growth. Uh, surrounding yourself with positive people and having that good energy, that good vibrations around. Mm -hmm. And um, also being allowed to feel your feelings. And with that, you can also give and receive feedback on mm -hmm. for, for you to once again grow. So it seemed like growth is the major value for you. Yes, always growing, always learning. I, I don't feel like there's ever, you know, when I talk to other people, like I learn from you, I, I there's always a takeaway, right? Mm -hmm. Whoever we meet, whatever situation we're in, there's always a takeaway. I always, I always say I meet people and, and my, my soul cup is full or my <laughs> happiness cup is full, right? We have <laughs> these cups that keep us going every day. And, and, and there's always a takeaway. And I, I try to be surrounded by people who just give that not, you know, there's a give and take and uh, maybe I bring something to the table, but they bring as well. Um, either it's happiness or joy or, you know, just, mm -hmm. just being, being there for each other. So you don't just bring something to the table. It seems like you bring the whole table. You bring the whole buff buffet <laughs> if you. <laughs> All right. So in 2016, you had made your, you, you had transitioned from the hospitality um, industry over into flipping houses. Tell us about that transition. So um, we moved to Austin in 2012 and I still worked for the Hyatt. My husband was back in school and he and I kind of had, a conversation of what's our purpose what's yeah. our what's our goal you know as parents of young children what what do we want to do that will make a difference in our lives and our kids lives so yeah. 
we decided that, um, you know, if we want to live a purposeful life, if we want to live a life worth living, that's what they say in, in Keller Williams, um, uh, we create a life by design. We design our lives. Like yeah. we're, we're the creators. We sit down and, and we, we decide what we want our life to look like. Amen. So we decided that investing in real estate would be a great way to um, create that, that perfect life for us. Not perfect, but the life that we desire to have. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. So my husband started uh, getting educated about, investing in real estate in 2016 we bought our first flip and did our first flip from that first flip we flip we bought five other houses and here we are now in 2021 and we've done over 200 flips um the goal for 2021 was 100 homes um and a couple of weeks ago, we bought our 51st home. So um, <laughs> we're halfway there. We're halfway there. Oh, my gosh. B-O-O-M. Boom. <laughs> I see. God, that's awesome. Okay. So, like, how did you start rising the ranks of uh, Keller Williams uh, to now you're, a, um, you're on the leadership council? I think just through positivity showing up every day being there for other people i joined keller williams because of the culture mm. it's a very abundant culture it's a very giving culture um and that's exactly what what made me be with keller williams and you know short short four years ago i was a brand new agent that had no idea what i was doing you know, just getting in the business. And there were so many people within Keller Williams that were there to help me and answer a question, regardless of how successful they are mm -hmm. or how, how busy they are, there was always somebody to help to, to help you. So um, I'm always, I always put myself back in the beginning. And when I see brand new agents, I'm like, I'm here for you. Call <laughs> me anytime. I remember writing my first contract. It took me a whole day. So you know, we, we're all, we've all started from somewhere and it's challenging. It's good to have somebody there to say, it's going to be okay. You're going to get better. That is so, <laughs> so always, beautiful. Always giving back. For me, it's always giving back. You know, the Keller Williams culture is abundance and there's enough for everybody. And we're always there to share resources and help each other. Amen. So, so abundance uh humility as well it sounds like and just giving back to that caring mm -hmm. and that great energy towards everybody whether you're the executives or the um the rookie <laughs> that's oh, yeah. just coming Absolutely. in <laughs> especially to the rookie right you know making sure yes. that you yes. do the same thing oh, and that's that's funny because what you're doing is you're carrying on your parents legacy in a way hear me out you're helping someone like realize and cultivate their dream, you know, with a good fertilizer of a, a nice, a, a great culture and then having them build that over time so they can realize that one, one day realize that they're living the dream that they've always desired like yourself. Mm -hmm. Ah, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Oh my gosh. Now with a woman that has done so much, so much, uh, as far as uh, moved to the United States, uh, you know, and got a, a wonderful husband and went from industry to another industry. You seem like a fearless person, but today you said that you wanted to release fear. Why is that? I mean, I, I'm fearful. Of, I used to be fearful of everything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. fear of fear of the unknown, fear of getting hurt, fear of losing something, right. Or losing someone. Mm -hmm. And I think that fear is still within me um, a lot. But again, I have my husband who's like, there is no fear. <laughs> He's fearless, <laughs> literally fearless. <laughs> so I have a great mentor you know, to, to walk alongside and kind of, he's the reassurance that, you know, fear should not, yes, fear is there. We all should fear, fear of a certain, certain things, but he's taught me that 
you know, um, I think fear limits us and, and us, it stops us for, from doing new things and different things. And, you know, fear has always been inside me. And it's, I, I think it's still there mm. in, in a different way, but it's definitely still there. Yeah. Yeah. And I could tell with the, you having a value of growth that um, limits is not something that you probably do very well or want to have. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> 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 I can just tell like it just, that's something that would bug me too if you know growth was my uh, main value what is some so obviously we're going to be releasing the fear on on the air right here but we I want to check on some things to, to do a before and after so what is something right now that you have a, a fear of like an inappropriate or unwarranted fear of that we can then check on afterwards to see what your mindset is about it Fear. I I would say fear of not being around for my kids. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. fear of not being around, for, not being there for my kids. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Like sometimes getting in a car, and I'm like things go through your mind. What if I get in a car accident and I mm. die today? Mm -hmm. What happens to my kids? Yeah. You know, fear of not being around for my kids. So let me, let me think, let me think, let me think the fear of, it's definitely a fear, like you said earlier, the fear of the unknown. Was there ever a time that you weren't around for your kids? Yes. When I used to work a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, you know, choosing real estate and choosing to to be a business owner and work for myself versus working for somebody else was that while I was working for the Hyatt, I worked a lot and I missed a lot of my kids, um, you know, life, early life. It's all a fog because mm -hmm. I worked so much mm -hmm. and I wasn't around that often. Mm -hmm. so. So it's, you you see you saw like what what was it that you saw in your kid? Is it something that you saw in your kids, um, or was it an opportunity, that, or was it something that you saw in someone else's kids that were like, oh my gosh, I don't want that to happen with my relationship with my children? Yeah, I mean, definitely throughout like being in the hospitality industry, you mm -hmm. see different families come every every year um and uh, i worked in resorts so we could see families all the time and yes i mean you can tell the families that had true connection with their children mm -hmm. and the conversations they had and you could see the families that were just there was a huge disconnect yeah the parents didn't even know who the kids are so i you know i've always wanted to have a relationship with my kids where it was a close relationship and you know I, I was always there for them and they knew that no matter what I will always be there for them amen that's it that's that's the instances right there that's where the fear came from it, it it's not necessarily you know you getting into a car accident it's more of a thing to where how can I help my kids be the people that I want them to be become mm -hmm. the the souls that I want them to become, you know, cause I mean, of course it's, it's, yeah, it's less about, you know, you passing away or anything, but it's more about how, how is my lack of quality time with them going to shape them in the long run. Mm -hmm. That's a good Definitely. one. That's yeah. a really good one. So, um, what I'd like you to do is to go back to that moment or one of the moments at the hotel in the resort. I want you to go back to one of those moments okay. where you felt that fear, like, oh my gosh, I hope my kids never are like that. <laughs> right? that's, that's, that's probably the conversation. That's the conversation I would have. Like, oh my God, I hope my kids are never like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And I want you to um, shift your consciousness around that. Okay. All good. 
Let's get it. All right. So let's get into it. Um, so, of course, there's only three things that you need to do. You need to use your imagination, follow directions, which is the most important thing. If you do your own thing, you're going to screw it up. So make sure that you follow everything that I say, because I've revised this whole system so it can have profound. You can have a profound experience. And of course, number three is to trust the process. Know that I'm your guide and I'm going to be leading you through this easily and effortlessly. Cool. OK, um, we're going to create your timeline. And with your timeline, your past can be to your left, to your right, or behind you. If you were to know, where's your past? Uh, behind me. Where's your future? Ahead of me. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> let's go. You got this. Is it all right with your unconscious mind for you to release this fear today and for you to be aware of it consciously? Yes. Awesome. What is the root cause of this problem? The first event, which when disconnected will cause this problem to disappear. If you were to know, when was the first time that you felt fear between the ages of birth and seven? How old were you? Um, maybe six. Do you have a specific event in mind? Yes or no? No. No? Let's, let's think of a specific event between the ages of birth and seven. Where you felt fear? Um, just being alone. Fear of being alone. There was always somebody at home. Mm -hmm. And I think this was the first time that I was ever alone. Mm. Just fear of being alone. So fear of being alone. We're also going to check on that. We're going to check on fear of not being around for the kids and fear of being alone when you were a kid. Not, of course, now. You, you probably found out. <laughs> <laughs> All good? Yes. Let's get into All right, let's go. You can go ahead and close your eyes and relax and let me know when you're ready for the process. Okay, I'm ready. Awesome. Now, just imagine floating up above your timeline and flow deeper and deeper and deeper into the past above that first event in which you felt fear when you were just a little girl. And just hover above that little girl, seeing her from a third person point of view. Let me know when you can see her. I see her. Awesome. Now stay right there. Now, just ask your unconscious mind what it needs to learn from the event. The learning of which will allow you to let go of the emotions easily and effortlessly. Your unconscious mind can preserve the learnings so that if you need them in the future, they'll be there. Just tell your unconscious mind to preserve the learnings. Focus your attention upon how hurt people hurt people. We're all doing the best that we can with the resources and consciousness that we have. We can't control anyone else's actions, but we can control our response. We can grow stronger and wiser. Other people's actions have nothing to do with us. It's a reflection of their baggage. And we're better people than we were when those events occurred, especially you. What is something positive and empowering? You can tell that little girl and everyone else involved in the event with the consciousness that you have today that will allow the emotions to evaporate like water on the concrete on a hot summer day. And as you preserve these learnings, the emotions are starting to dissipate more and more until they're all gone. Just let me know when they're all gone. They're all gone. Awesome. Now, the most important thing about this exercise is the learnings from the event. So with your eyes closed and you hovering above the little girl, tell me, what did you learn from that event? That you shouldn't fear anybody or anything. Everything will be okay. That she is not responsible for other people's happiness. Mm. And she just needs to let go. That's right. That's right. Very good. Awesome. Now, just imagine floating up above your timeline and flow deeper and deeper and deeper into the past above the dinosaurs during the prehistoric age. Now, as you're above the dinosaurs, flow deeper and deeper and deeper into space to where space and the atmosphere connects. And imagine your timeline is the size of a fingernail. Let me know when you're there. I'm there. Awesome. As you float there, weightless, in space, ask yourself now, where are the emotions? Tell me, are they there or have they disappeared now? They're disappeared. Awesome. Float down inside the event. Sink to your own eyes. 
as a little girl and check on the emotions. Tell me, are they there or have they disappeared now? They have disappeared. Awesome. Flow back above the dinosaurs and then float into space to where space and the atmosphere connects. Let me know when you're there. I'm there. Awesome. Here we go. Now, just imagine floating very, very high above your timeline, above each and every event in which you felt fear from birth until now in chronological order. Don't skip one event. Preserve the learnings and let go of all the fear all the way back to now. Go. <laughs> Welcome back. Wow. <laughs> Wow, this was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was outside of my body. Is that how you're supposed to feel? Yeah, definitely. Wow. Uh, Did a great job. Do you, do you smell bacon? No, but I smell vanilla. <laughs> Is that? I don't know. <laughs> I asked, do you smell bacon to help you break the state that you were in, the state of mind that you were in? Can you um, can you remember a time in the past in which you used to feel that old emotion and go back and notice if you can feel it or you may find that you cannot? I, I can't remember. Can't find. Mm -mm. Awesome. Now, I want you to imagine going out into the future to an unspecified time in the future, which if it would have happened in the past, you would have felt inappropriate or unwarranted fear, but it's the future now. So see if you can find that old emotion or you may find that you cannot. I cannot. Congratulations, you just released a bunch of fear. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is amazing. <laughs> I, I, I was not sure what it's gonna feel like and it mm -hmm. feels I feel different. I feel like a new person. <laughs> <laughs> Already? All we did was release fear. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Very yeah. good. Very, very good. What were some of the things that you learned? Let's go over some of the things that you learned uh, when you, as you released fear. Um, that I shouldn't worry about everything and anything. Like, I... I realized that I used to worry about how happy my family was and like the fear of them not being happy or not being, um, yeah, that came up. Mm. Cause I remember making sure that, you know, everybody was, everybody's happy mm -hmm. and I was the one responsible for everybody's happiness. Yeah. So the fear of people not being happy. So that's what you said earlier when you said you're not responsible for anyone else's happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, do you f still feel in, in some ways that you're happy, um, that you're responsible for your family's happiness to this day? No, not anymore. Yeah, good. Not Very anymore. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, it, what, what else did you learn uh, to help you release these fears? Um, that I I shouldn't I should I should not be like anticipating fear. I shouldn't be scared before something even happens. Mm. You know, I I should just be in the moment and let feel the feeling versus anticipating the fear leading to whatever is about to happen yeah yeah so so like um the works of dr joe Dispenza says that you know if we feel something then it can go from a mood to being a part of our personality mm -hmm. so like the base emotion when you're going through something or when you're about to get into something is fear so automatically oh you you're having change boom go ahead and kick that fear in it's it's automatic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like now you have a different perspective on it and like no i can i can anchor myself in something different besides fear mm -hmm. 
Yeah. What would be a different emotion that you would want to feel? What would be a different mindset that you would want to have besides the um, mindset of fear? Uh, I, I would say excitement for the experience versus fear, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Excitement, yeah. Excitement versus fear. Excitement of like the wonderful possibilities, ex- of mm-hmm. excitement of like mm-hmm. it going well. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. you don't, you and your husband for that matter, don't seem like people that wouldn't take calculated risks. That, no, yeah, no, we take risks all the time. <laughs> but I'm, I'm terrified most of the time, right? I'm just, and then not fearing situations, but being excited and what might come out of it versus living in that fear. Yeah. The what, what ifs. Yeah. What ifs, what ifs. Those will take you to the grave a whole lot faster than anything else is those what ifs, mm-hmm. you know? That's when you're truly not living. You're not in the in the present moment. Mm-hmm. If you don't mm-hmm. have, if you have a lot of what ifs, this or in a negative way, of course. There's always yes. like, oh, what yes. if this? And what if that? Yes. <laughs> what ifs in the negative way? Yes. Mm-hmm. Anything else that you learned uh, that helped you release fear? I think that's it. Yeah. Awesome. So um, for that fear of being alone when you were a little kid, was that mm-hmm. the, um, how was that like, and what is your perspective on that now? That it's okay to be alone and whatever back then, you know, my mind was going through, what mm-hmm. if somebody breaks in? Mm-hmm. What if somebody comes and hurts me? Mm-hmm. Um, fear of ghosts and stuff. I don't know why <laughs> that came up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, whatever it is can hurt me. Yeah. Huh. Just a little girl going through her emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now, now you're laughing about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you see how much you've grown now and see like oh like that there in fact you know you being alone is uh probably one of the things that help you be so introspective in the first place like you said you mm-hmm. know you need those moments to think mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just sitting with myself like growing up that was not being alone was not you know when you grow up in a household where you live with your grandparents like you're never alone. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> You're never by yourself. Mm-hmm. I don't think there was ever a time where you can, there's always somebody or something there. Um, and I think I was brought up in a society where, you know, you're always looking out. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter what you as an individual, you always sacrifice yourself for, for, for the family, for Right. whatever so yeah yeah definitely i had to learn how to be alone and enjoy that mm-hmm. um it's still a challenge so <laughs> i'm sure it's a challenge you can overcome i think and uh yeah it's but it's, it's definitely needed i mean especially you know being around like-minded and positive people is is a big thing for growth but being by yourself and truly seeing mm-hmm. what you think as a person and where your mm-hmm. heart is and where your mind is. That's a big part of growth as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And wh- wh- how's that fear of not being around for your kids? How's that now? I don't think it's there. <laughs> really? I mean, I, I think Just knowing that pouring into the kids with the time that we have will help, will help that fear of right, like living by example, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and making sure that you know, 
um, pouring into them so they they become good human beings now and equipping them with the tools to to deal with things and and make them strong people yeah have strong personalities mm -hmm. yeah wow so it sounds like that the main lesson for you was to stay present stay in the present moment mm -hmm. you know like away from fear that something um negatively will happen but also stay in the present moment when it comes to the things that you appreciate and really investing into them with your heart and soul mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely yes. staying in the present that's huge Saying we're here now, what can we do now? Let's yeah. not think about the <laughs> the, the what if. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can only do what you can, and mm -hmm. with that with that time that you have, you you we can all stay in this moment and do our very best. And with that, everything will work out the way that it needs to. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's beautiful. How do you feel? I feel great. Yeah. I feel good. Mm -hmm. now, I, I, it uh, was it was an amazing during. I I could feel a tingling. Is that normal to feel mm -hmm. tingling in your body and like just like I'm out of my body, but mm -hmm. I'm still there. Mm -hmm. This was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I didn't know what to expect, and <laughs> this was. Uh, yeah, amazing. <laughs> Love the smile on your face, the, <laughs> the deep breaths. Yes, the um. So yeah, the, a tingling can happen. Now you, you were you were definitely like into it to where you were in like a, a trance trance type of um type of state. You're in a deeper mm -hmm. trance, and that's that's where you're in the visualization. You imagine yourself floating and you mm -hmm. know being uh, weightless and everything. And I mean, you did absolutely amazing. You did absolutely amazing. Awesome. That, that, that smile. <laughs> that <was> great. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that smile. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, oh. Was, was there any tension that you had before the um, before the exercise that is different now afterwards? Yeah, just the worry of the day, like there's just, I think before we started, I was like, oh, I have so many things to do. Yeah. And now I just feel like this calmness, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like, it, I don't know how to explain it. Do other people react like this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes? Okay. You, 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 heard, you heard it on the other podcast, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or do most people react like this is what you're you just have you just I just feel calm. Yeah. I just feel like it's all good. Everything's gonna be okay. Imagine like, there's no worry. Imagine doing this every day, like in the morning, like making it like a part of the morning routine, just starting out with a clean slate, just seeing like oh everything's gonna be fine. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I try to do this as like every single morning as much as possible for sure. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Good stuff. Oh my goodness. Mimi, you are outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you for the opportunity of course now what i want to let you know is the people that have the best results and to keep this high you kind of feel like a, mm -hmm. a buzz right now to keep the buzz you have to make sure that you take care of yourself so what i mean by okay. that is whatever you do as far as your self-care whether it be taking evening baths or journaling yoga working out walking whatever you know what i mean mm -hmm. do that OK, and okay. taking care of that mental space and always keeping that space for you and remembering the lessons. Go, go over the learnings all the time. Make sure that those learnings are a part of your subconscious. If you do that, then you will have outstanding results and you'll feel this buzz for a long time. Awesome. 
Mm-hmm. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Would you mind coming back on the show in a little uh, in a little while so we can um, just see how you're doing and see how that you know the the fears are afterwards? Yeah, I, I would love to. Awesome. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you. And thank you to everybody out there who tuned in today for today's episode. So much value, so much like that we learned from Mimi here today. Um, Mimi, any other like wise words or a message that you would like to to tell the audience out there? Um, I would say be a, be a, be a forever um, student of, you know, of positivity and always improve yourself and always be open to new things. For me, it's like, I know that, you know, never settle. Let's put it this way. Never settle. That's it. Mm -hmm. Never settle. Always be on a journey to better yourself. That's the journey I'm on. And it's been amazing. So (laughs) <laughs> what amazing advice that is awesome thank you yeah thank, thank you, you. <laughs> this is amazing i don't know i can take my the smile off my face <laughs> <laughs> awesome. great job oh my gosh uh once again thank you guys out there uh who tuned in um mimi is awesome Please consider hitting the like and subscribe button if you are out there on Facebook and YouTube. If you're on the podcast, please look out for another episode. I'm going to be uploading tons of them because this is what I love doing. Besides that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get out of here and have an outstanding day. Uh, You all take care of yourself and take care of one another. Peace. Bye.